स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया tell the national program on technology enhanced learning being brought to you by the indian institutes of technology and the indian institute of science this is a video um, uh, series uh, on cultural studies a subject that is taught in some of the iits as um, an elective course in uh, at the btec level in the uh, from the hss department the department of humanities and social sciences uh, the lectures in these series are explicatory in nature focusing on some of the elementary concepts and articulations some of uh, the basic theoretical theoretical concepts in a bid to acquaint the students Uh, studying in various engineering colleges in our in our country uh, to the basics of cultural studies however the hope is also this that students who are at higher levels for instance at post graduate levels in uh, humanities and social sciences uh, departments it uh, it is hoped that these lectures will also be useful for such students so we are in module 3 which is entitled sites of cultural studies we have already looked at uh, four different sites of cultural studies and we are uh, in lecture 5 now which is entitled language um language as a site of cultural studies is, is uh, slightly different from the way we have understood the previous uh, concepts or sites of cultural studies in that it is both a site and it is something that is also constitutive of culture okay so it is a very rich site in that sense in the sense of being both a uh, uh, you know both a uh, backdrop as well as something that is constitutive of culture anyway we now go into the recap which is um, which we do in all the lectures we we'll talk about the lecture which have which we have uh, you know um, which we gave just before this and you will recall that our topic in the last lecture was that of development and development as related to culture and the way it is seen in cultural studies okay and uh, we saw that the world commission on culture and development in 1992 uh, described culture as ways of living together and uh, we recall that culture is understood as a way of life the general definition of culture is a way of life but here the together the living together is emphasized then we also saw that the scope of studying development from a cultural studies perspective includes for example and among others culture as a right cultural policy economic and social practices sustainable development culture as environment for well being these are no means the only uh you know ways in which the scope of studying development in cultural studies uh you know or, or from a cultural perspective uh, may be delineated there are several others but basically we may zoom in on these five um you know components or features of the scope of studying development from a cultural studies perspective then we saw that in this uh, perspective the resources of the people okay the resources of a community for instance heritage beliefs values myths modes of expression these are these hold or at least should hold center center stage as the critics in this domain claim for true development for people centered development to happen next um i had left out uh, two slides for you know owing to paucity of time and i'm quickly going to refer to this remember we had talked about bhikkhu parekh's 
um, a document on uh, you know emphasizing pluralism, multiculturality. Okay, there it follows that the features of contemporary multicultural societies are different um, in the sense that, or at least you know we have to recognize these as different, and they are, for instance, CMC or for in short, for contemporary multicultural societies is uh, contemporary multicultural um, you know uh, societies or contemporary uh, multiculturalism is wider and deeper covering larger areas of human existence and rooted in important differences in understanding what it means to lead a good life. Okay? So, it, uh, it does not uh, does not sweep away so to speak it does not uh, you know ignore okay the you know sort of the net is cast um, very wide and deep okay to include different ways of living as it says here covering larger areas of human existence next contemporary multiculturalism is more defined this is an important word more defined uh, uh, more questioning of dominating structures of dominant structures okay demanding a democratic setup with equal rights to life and resources. Okay. So, this follows obviously from point number 1 that is casting the net wider and deeper in a bid to be more inclusive in a bid to um, accommodate everyone no matter how heterogeneous, how diverse cultures, beliefs and cultural resources are. And on the other hand this ties in with the fact that it contemporary multiculturalism has to be sort of defined and questioning in a bid to bring in more democratic uh, you know more uh, democratic setups. So, it is also uh, situated in the context of an increasing economic and cultural globalization, where there is a, as, it say, as I said mentioned before there is a paradox of both homogeneity okay, and heterogeneity of both sameness and difference. Next cultural uh, sorry contemporary multiculturalism has as its legacy the history of the culturally homogenizing modern nation state. Okay, we cannot do away with the fact that uh, the you know it is informed okay by the uh, the fact that there is a homogenizing tendency of uh, you know the modern nation state for instance in the, even in, in, in a in a country like ours where it is a fact that there is a lot of uh, cultural heterogene heterogeneity heterogeneity of beliefs diversity okay nevertheless the, the concept of the nation state the modern nation state that is india uh, has whether we like it or not a certain homogenizing tendency of trying to trying to put all cultures all communities within the bigger or the larger rubric of a nation state. Okay. So, unity is mistaken as homogeneity and equality as uniformity we have to be very careful in differentiating uh, between terms like these. And finally, we found that what is the way out if we have to include culture as a central point in development, there should be a plurality of discourses, audiences, terrains, a certain decentered consciousness and anti totalizing and anti uh, syst uh, you know systemic um, perspective and common grounds of assembly. Also, there has to there has to be an insistence in policy on development policy matters on multicultural education, multicultural national symbols etcetera. Okay. So, well we now come to um, the topic of discussion the side as it were which is language in today's uh, lecture and the key sources in these lecture are uh, two books by, Cree, uh, by Chris Barker and these are uh, you are acquainted with these by now cultural studies theory and practice and making sense of cultural studies. Fine. First, let us read from Chris Barker and let us unpack what he has to say. Okay. Language is a central concern of cultural studies. It is the means and medium for the generation of significance or meaning. In our first very first two lectures of these uh, you know um, virtual classes uh, in this series with which we began our lectures, we saw that uh, contemporary cultural studies is um, 
is different from, uh, you know, it is not that culture was not studied before contemporary cultural studies. Okay. It is different in the sense that there is a larger focus okay, or a greater focus on meaning, okay, on how meaning emanates, okay, on how significance emanates, on uh, you know the on the way symbols are harnessed and used, right. We also noted that there was you know the, the political angle was immensely important and is an important central feature of doing cultural studies as it were. Okay. And we also understood very importantly, um, you know the at some time at times the textual nature of culture okay. and we, we compared it to a language that is we also said that culture is like a language or even that culture is a language. Okay. So, language therefore, Barker rightly, rightly says the language is a central concern of cultural studies and why so? Because language is because this here both the means and the medium for the generation of significance or meaning. Okay. It is both the tool that we use and the vehicle or the medium through which any meaning or any significance or even any value okay, system is instantiated. It is largely if not solely through language. Next he goes on to say the concept of meaning is core to the explication of culture and that is why language is as I said already a site okay, where culture happens. Culture happens we may say through language. So, the concept of meaning is core to the ex explication of culture. To investigate culture is to explore, let us look underline this, to explore how meaning is produced symbolically in language as a signifying system. Okay. Look at the importance of language here. Language constitutes culture okay. and in, if you want to understand culture, if you want to analyze culture, if you want to explore culture as Barker says, if you want to investigate culture as he says, what we need to do is to our exploration should be uh, on how okay, on how meaning is produced through language. Next he says here meaning is generated through difference. Okay, we already uh, uh, we had already talked about post structuralism and the importance of uh, difference, how meaning is differential in any text for that matter that there is nothing ontologic, no ontological meaning ascribed to any word. Okay. Meanings emanate from a system of difference where every unit gets its meaning or its significance because it is not something else which you call uh, you know getting the meaning by negation or as or in relation to uh, you know in relation to other words in the system. Okay. For instance, we saw that a word like cat is understood because from the point of view of meaning because it is not a dog or because it is not uh, you know uh, uh, not another animal and secondly also through sound that is it is not the cat is not a bat or a hat or a man. Okay. Also we can say that uh, dwelling places like house, a uh, hut, hovel, shed, mansion, villa all these individual words okay, uh, are possible or take on their meaning or significance only by not being the other. So, you recognize uh, the meaning of um, a house is, uh, is that it is not a hovel or a mansion. Okay. So, meaning emanates from a system of difference. Here meaning, let us look at this, here meaning is generated through difference, the relation of one signifier to another rather than, than by reference to fixed entities. That is language in this sense a sense begun by Ferdinand de Saussure and finally, uh, reaching its most uh, you know radical if I may use the word radical um, enunciation in the work of Jacques Derrida. Okay. And um, where 
you know, language is said to be non-referential. Language does not refer to any fixed entities in this world in an independent object world. Okay. This of course, has huge philosophical implications which I am not going to go into. So, okay, beginning with you know, these words of Barker, language is a central feature of cultural studies. Okay. It is both the means and medium through which meaning and significance emanate. Okay. It is the vehicle of the production of meaning and if you have to understand culture which is like a language because it operates through a system of difference through signifying practices. Okay. Then we have to consider it as a language. Okay. Meaning is gen and to show how like language meaning in culture is also generated through difference. Right. So, now you see how it is both language is both constitutive of culture and at the same time being the site of culture. Okay. Therefore, language if you look at this sl uh, slide language is you know both the means right through uh, which meaning happens or meaning is generated and it is both is also the medium for the generation of meaning such is the importance of language. Culture therefore, is also like, like a language or culture happens you know in language, because we, we have seen already in, in, in other lectures that culture is also defined as maps of meaning. Okay. Maps of meaning which are uh, these maps of meaning because they emanate, okay, because they happen or this kind of cartography happens, because it is it works like a language, okay, because it works through signifying practices through a system of differences, okay. And um, the parallel between uh, you know these uh, in this case the parallel between language and culture is well established in cultural studies. The important thing to note here as we know this word here is that it is regulated please look at this slide. Okay. Culture is maps of meaning all right, but it is also one that is uh, quite heavily regulated. Okay. Objects and you know then further we may go on to say objects and practices, objects in our in our way of life, in our living, okay, and practices of living, right? Therefore, how do they gain significance? If you look at this slide here, uh, objects and practices gain significance or meaning, even value, through precisely the play or crisscrossing of discourses. If you recall, in our module. In our second module, which was devoted to key concepts, we uh, talked about discourse. You know, one uh, uh, whole lecture was de devoted to, to discourse. Okay, and he understood discourse as ways of speaking. Very simply put, as ways of speaking about something. So, objects and practices in culture also gain significance through the crisscrossing of discourses. Simply put, through the crisscrossing of language. Okay, so the way of life even if it sees even if you feel that it is it is of course it is material okay of course it is something that is observable something that is tangible so much so that when somebody proposes that culture is textual uh, we may uh, we may quite um, you know uh, strongly react to that to such a such an articulation right but we are not saying that culture is only textual that culture exists only as marks on a page okay but the point is the articulation of culture, okay, the articulation of these objects and practices and therefore, their meaning generation and significance happens because of discourse. Okay. This is a point that has to be noted very, very carefully. Okay. Fine. Next, again let us read from Barker. Culture can now this is in a way he's uh, uh, you know this is the sum you know summing up of the previous slides and you'll recognize it here so, uh, uh, sorry culture can be regarded as regulated maps of meaning these maps are constituted by crisscrossing discourses through which objects and practices acquire significance culture is a snapshot of the play of discursive practices within a given time and place. This is very important. Okay. Look at the metaphor of the snapshot right, of the photograph. Culture is a snapshot 
in a specific time in any specific time and space okay it is like a photograph that has been taken and that time and and space is frozen in that uh, the photograph and depends and the photo that snapshot depends on uh, the circumstances of the of the time and place so culture is a snapshot of the play of discursive practices within a given time and space and the important word here is if you look at this slide very important to know that these are not, not fixed and this you know the metaphor of the snapshot for instance the snapshot is not once and for all every different moment you have different snapshots okay meaning that all snapshots therefore are are uh, temporary in the sense that they are not eternal in the same way okay culture is and the articulation of culture the regulated maps of meaning are ever changing fluid and dynamic and also temporary then in in making sense of cultural studies barker says the machinery and operations of language are central concerns and problems for cultural studies now look at these two words the machinery and operations of language that is looking at language uh, as a system trying to find out you know like a machine for instance how these are constituted what are the different units that go on to make the system called language okay and the operations of language you can see this uh, metaphors from engineering okay uh, the machinery and operations of language are the central if not chief concerns of cultural studies then he says indeed the investigation of culture has often been regarded as look at this as virtually interchangeable with the exploration of meaning produced symbol symbolically through signifying systems sorry through signifying systems that work like a language most important okay that work like a language let's look at this again a the machinery and operations of language are central concerns and also also it says uses the word problems these are problems of for cultural studies for instance they are not easily uh, you know there is no easy answer for them they cannot be solved so easily okay they are both the concerns and problems of cultural studies indeed the investigation of culture has often been regarded uh, as this is the point we had discussed earlier let us see how barker has articulated it as he says virtually interchangeable with the exploration of meaning produced symbolically through signifying that the systems that work like a language okay so culture works through signifying a system systems like a language okay so i think this is clear by now we have uh, you know um, uh, dwelt on this point of language being a central feature of cultural studies in the last few slides therefore culture as you look at this slide culture is like a language okay it works like a language so there are similar mechanisms at work if you look at look at these why because like language okay culture is also about the selection the selection and organization of signs okay this takes on the most important meaning culture uh, works like a language precisely because it is uh, you know it is the selection and organization of signs and signifying practices now let us again read from barker if the study okay if the study of culture centers on the generation of meaningful representations right okay look at this one is you study how meaning happens you study the signifying practices you study as he says the machinery and operations of language you know to lay bare how culture works like a system of science how culture like language okay um, involves right the selection and organization of signs that is one part of the story okay the other part of the story is this please look at this slide then the power to name and to make particular descriptions stick forms the core of cultural studies okay there is the play of power and politics if you look at the slide just before this in the very selection and organization of science therein is the whole business of cultural studies okay how 
do we why do we select certain signs and not others? How and why are there certain ways of organizing these very signs and not other ways of organizing these very signs when they are these others are always potential ways of organize, uh, organizing signs. This is also tied to the whole idea of categorization. Okay. We categorize or we carve out reality through categories in certain ways. Okay. Now, is this the only way to carve out reality? There are, these are questions that are raised both in philosophy and in cultural studies. Okay. Are these the only ways that reality may be carved out? For instance, the categories of male and female, okay, which are such huge categories, uh, they are almost schemas in our minds. So, so, the moment you look at things as male and female and you cancel out other ways of looking at uh, human beings. Okay. So, we are uh, reality, our construction of reality is full of signs, full of selections, full of organization and the chief concern of cultural studies is to, is to show as I said how these things are constituted. Okay, mainly through language and like a language and secondly, okay, why do certain descriptions stick as that is the word here, how to say, so why do particular descriptions stick, right. The why do only some people have the power to name, right, cultural objects and practices. This is the core of cultural studies. Here as he says, culture is understood to be a zone of contestation, it is a zone of conflict, right. You uh, note the uh, note another way of looking at culture as a way of living together as we saw in the last lecture. Okay. But culture studies uh, in another sense also considers well almost everything as zones or sites so to speak of contestation and conflict. In, in which sense? In the sense that many meanings clamor you know to be the correct description right we pick out or the or maybe dominant groups pick out only those that serve the dominant groups okay the dominant groups therefore have the power to name these things and also they devise mechanisms uh, regulated ways okay to make these things stick to make these def, uh, descriptions stick so here let's look at this here again here culture is understood to be a zone of contestation in which meanings and versions of the word, this is the word, versions of the world compete for ascendancy. Okay. This again ties in to, um, uh, to perspectives in philosophy that claim that we can only have different ways of living and maybe myriad potential ways of um, it, is, it says here in this slide versions of the world, meanings and versions of the world. So, which version of the world sticks is not necessarily because it is the best version of the world or the best description of reality. Okay. It sticks because of issues of power, issues of uh, how certain meanings and versions are ignored or, or even hidden. Okay, in a bid to have the power, so to speak, to name and to make certain descriptions stick, right. Now, uh, before we go on to further explicate this, it may seem that you know uh, we are caught, so to speak, in this language trap of looking at culture as a language. You could also say that we are caught in this culture trap, right. So, uh, in a sense that only always that always the power to name will reside with dominant groups or the feeling that um, you know no other version you know that some uh, some versions are always doomed to to remain uh, kind of latent possibilities but as barker says here and elsewhere i mean in these books and elsewhere right uh, how is he asks how is change possible at all or are we always to be in this trap there are ways out and these are also the concerns of cultural studies. Okay. One is imagining alternative possibilities, one would have to first acknowledge the fact that change can be done okay, and 
change is brought about only by imagining that there may be other possible alternatives. Once you imagine, once you may, you know, once you think or you can kind of visualize, right? You can visualize that the, the world can be different, that descriptions can be different, only then can change be possible. So, first is imagining alternative possibilities. Second is very important redescription. Remember, in the beginning of this lecture, uh, we, we discussed this point also. We said that culture is regulated maps of meaning, culture is ultimately discursive. Do you, do you recall the culture is a matter of what was the term? Matter of the play or criss crossing of discourses. Okay. Now, if we if we have to change this, this site, what do we do? We have to begin to re-describe and this re-describing or going by the definition of discourse is a way of speaking or having new ways of speaking, devising new ways of speaking about anything of, of reality, of gender, of, of sexuality, of race, of caste, class etcetera, new ways of looking at it enables us to uh, come out of this language trap or culture as uh, you know uh, the trap of dominant language uh, or sorry of dominant groups. Okay. So, let us begin to re-describe, we are going to talk about it anew, okay, dismantling the usual categories for instance. right? Then re-signification, the next point is re-signification that is the, the signs, right? the signs that remember um, I think it was one of on in the lecture in post structuralism perhaps where we had uh, talked about a bit about uh, Saussure or an in structuralism sorry on Saussure and uh, we said that there is no one uh, one on one uh, you know one to one correspondence between between um, an object and the name we give to an object that much you know almost the whole of it it may be claimed uh, is arbitrary by nature. Right. So, but science also, Saussure also agree, uh, uh, agrees that finally, some signs uh, you know become accepted. There are some correspondences which are uh, you know maintained by convention and they are very difficult to difficult to uh, dismantle. Uh, for instance, the traffic signal system of, of uh, say red, amber and green is so ensconced in our culture, in our, in our minds also that we do not find any reason to, to dismantle these and for instance replace these with say, say pink, lavender and uh, you know um, and indigo for instance. Right? But uh, people, culture, ways of living, realities of domination and oppression are not like traffic signals. Okay? And at times it is very important to make to re-signify things, uh, to make things uh, you know to, to, to sort of dismantle the conventionalized something things that have kind of uh, you know um, uh, kind of achieved a status of almost naturalness. It is important to, to question and uh, you know uh, reframe the whole process of re-signification of objects and practices. Then next point here is point number 4, recognizing the politics of the signifier. Right? Remember again that we had spoken about a sign being divided into a signifier and the signified. Okay? So, you know assigning signifiers and their meanings concepts that are signified is not uh, a wholly arbitrary from the point of view of politics and cultural studies is never a wholly arbitrary and sort of innocent sort of neutral sort of matter okay, that just so happened that this is this signifies some you know this, this signifies that. Now, recognizing that there is politics, there is power involved in the signification process is another way in which change as said or coming out of the language uh, sorry cultural trap is possible. Then finally, social contradictions recognizing very well that uh, there are certain contradictory forces in, in, uh, in our social lives, in our cultural lives that we cannot do without. 
that it is a reality of uh, our social lives of our cultural living. So, this is something that we have to first acknowledge okay, as we do not don't sweep it under the carpet that everything is hunky dory and that we do not you know have you know there is no contest and all um, classes caste classes are you know kind of happy with their own uh, happy with their own situation it is never like that. So, a realization a recognition so to speak of the existence of social contradictions and how to work the work on this further on these okay. these are also other uh, ways of bringing in change and uh, that is dismantling or coming out of the cultural trap. Quickly look at it again how is change possible? We have to be able to imagine alternative possibilities, okay. we should be able to write or we should be able to articulate new descriptions, descriptions that may be completely that might completely take us off our mark. Okay. Uh, we should have newer discourses, right? Uh, we should be able to uh, to re-signify, you know, to question, and then have new frameworks of signification in which the politics of the signifier is something that we have to admit and work on. And finally, to we have also to understand that society, social, and cultural living is full of contradictions, right? So it's a very rich, uh, you know, it's an array of possibilities of how to get. Uh, you know over or um, to sort of conquer the language uh, the cultural trap. Then again coming back to language and, and how Barker has uh, you know Barker has articulated these we will we'll read again. Well, Barker says further the signifying practices of language endow material objects and social look at this material okay, language endows material objects and social practices with meanings that are brought into view and made intelligible to us in terms which language delimits. This is very important. Okay. Uh, the sign system, the signifying practices of language it is only through that, that is why language is a site and something that is constitutive of culture. Okay. I think this quotation uh, brings it uh, brings out the facts so beautifully, right? The signifying practices of language and endow material objects and social practices with meanings. Okay, meanings are are uh, meanings of these practices and objects. Okay, uh, are uh, uh, are possible? Are they happen through discourse, through language, and they are made intelligible to us in terms only of language. Okay, look at this term in terms of which look at this please in terms uh, which language delimits. So, language will again make you know the boundaries within which something is intelligible right. This again brings in the primacy of language right. At the same time it shows very very beautifully it shows the way out for us. For instance, if you re-describe okay, if we have if you re-signify Right. If you have different frame, newer frameworks of describing, uh, what are these? Oh, uh, material objects, social cultural practices. Okay. Then you uh, you also break what is uh, uh, what is given here. The word here, the delimitations. Do you follow the delimitations that language imposes on our on on our intelligibility, the understanding of cultural practices? Let me read this again slowly. Further, the signifying practices of language endow or give material objects and social practices with meanings that are brought into view and made intelligible that we understand these to us in terms which language delimits or which language sets up or sets for us. Further, language structures which meanings can or cannot be deployed under determinate circumstances by speaking subjects. As such, language is implicated in forms of power, with cultural politics operating at the level of signification and text. Of course, this, this pronouncements as these have not, you know, uh, have it is not that they have not undergone a lot of criticism, particularly by Marxist critics, for instance, by critics from the material, um, you know, from the school of materialism, for instance, okay, uh, who are who are uh, some of whom are who are deeply against this whole idea of culture as text, 
ok. But since we are talking about the primacy of language as a site and a constitutive uh, factor of, uh, of culture ok, we may consider these uh, to be of importance. So, as such language is implicated in forms of power with cultural politics operating at the level of signification and text. Next, well um, in his book Cultural Studies Theory and Practice, um, uh, Barker talks about uh, the philosopher Richard Rorty and we will spend a few slides or uh, you know, a few minutes on, on Rorty. Um, Richard Rorty is an important philosopher when it comes to what we call the anti representationalist school of thought or perspective in philosophy. Okay. So, Rorty uh, there let us look at two important statements by him. Okay. This is not simply a metaphor the word conversation right. Rorty considers culture as conversation this obviously immediately brings into the picture the primacy of the speaking subject right. The primacy of language the primacy of discourse all of which we have seen so far. Okay. So, Richard Rorty and his work may be considered or may be brought in here to throw more light or in support of language as a site and as a constitutive feature of culture. Okay. So, Rorty calls culture a conversation okay, and therefore, points again to the primacy of language in culture. Okay. Now, what we will do is we will look at the way Barker has summarized Rorty's contribution to this what we call anti representationalist school of um, philosophy. Okay. First now let us let take the let us take these one by one. First Ro uh, Rorty's contribution is this the formation of meaning and culture as formed in the joint action of social relationships. Okay. It is not again that uh, it is not it is not that it is said that the formation of meaning and culture or even the primacy of language it is not that it happens in a in a in a rarefied realm of simply language. Okay. His contribution here is that he sees you know this formation of meaning and culture uh, as through language all right, but as formed by the as he says the joint action of social relationships. It happens in culture, it happens in in, so, in society, it happens in living, in hap, it happens in most importantly through human relationships. Okay. Second he points to what Barker calls the constitutive and action orient orientation of language in the constant uh, context of social dialogue. Again look at this carefully you see how, how Rorty is avoiding you know avoiding uh, a, a perspective that is completely that sees culture as completely completely textual completely you know as an abstract system like language. Okay. It says here the constitutive and action orientation of language is important in the cons and it happens in the context of social dialogue. This is similar uh, to the articulation in that is number 1 which he had called the joint action of social relationships. Here also we have the importance of uh, society as uh, you know culture uh, as um, not just the backdrop, okay, but more in a dialectical process of social dialogue. Number three, he talks about the importance of the of the social practice of reason giving in the justification of action. And let's look at this again. He says again, you see the word social coming in all the time. Okay, he lays impo great importance on the social practice of reason giving in the justification of action of uh, justification of practices 
say for instance in if you have to bring it to our domain uh, of cultural practices and activities okay again the social practice of reason giving point number 4 to think through cross cultural communication in terms of the learning of language skills okay now here he gives primary importance to again to language that is even in in cross cultural communication okay language skills become become very important okay so when you communicate it is important that you learn uh, to know the language of the other if not you have certain uh, language skills through which you may communicate uh, signs you may communicate the uh, you know uh, uh, what the signifying practices are in your own culture and try to understand another culture okay through their signifying systems and practices next he also he one of his important contributions uh, lies in the fact that he has pointed to the variability of accounts okay to which any state of affairs can be put now uh, you will see that this is something that was discussed earlier okay and you also say uh, we also acknowledge the fact that roti has also made this contribution among other scholars the variability of accounts so any one account is not the natural account or even official accounts of things may not be the natural okay uh, the natural or the objective accounts an account or a description now this again ties into the need as remember what Barker had said the need to redescribe things okay so there are there are varying accounts of any cultural practice okay even of cultural uh, cultural objects of reality in general okay so the variability of accounts to which any state of affairs may be put finally he talks about culture as involving both agreement okay contestation and conflict over meanings and actions so it is not that once you break the language tra uh, trap or the culture trap okay it is not that everything again that everything will be uh, you know beautifully homogenized that anything will uh, everything uh, is now uh, you know uh, without conflict and full of you know peace and harmony the point here is you have to live with the fact that culture involves at any stage in any given time and space will involve conflict and contestation apart from agreement. So, there is if you use the word dialectical process between agreement and contestation, there will be further agreement and further contestation. Okay. So, the, this is uh, those of you are interested on how Rorty may be kind of sort of harness for cultural studies may go on uh, to look at this philosopher. right? Therefore, Rorty's contribution uh, belongs to the field of anti representationalism that things cannot be represented, right. There is no god like vantage point or important point, uh, uh, you know, of certainty from which to survey the world and language separately in order to establish the relationship between them. So, so that is no god like view, there is no god, uh, uh, you know, god view of the world, that which is the one view of the world we have to have uh, says a variability of accounts we have to have redescriptions and resignifications at the same time living with the fact that there would be agreement and contestation always working in dialectical processes okay it is not that we are doomed to be so but within this we may again work through through systems of redescription resignification okay we uh, can work to towards a situation where you know we understand these and try to make the world a better place. Therefore, there are no objective truths and there can in the Rotian scheme be only justifications. Okay. So, we um, now move to the discussion and for instance the important question here which, has, which I have harped upon a couple of times is how is language a site of culture. Right? We, this is a module on, on, on sites of culture. So, how is language a site of culture? language is a site of culture in that in the sense that uh, meaning is gen, meaning in culture is generated okay through language and language is both a means and a medium of meaning generation and culture is understood as regulated maps of meaning okay in in that way language is a site because it happens there right this is in the first place 
uh, even if it is culture is a matter uh, in is a, uh, is a material matter so to speak. Okay. Nevertheless, the descriptions happen in language. So, culture also is like a language, culture is maps of meaning that are regulated by systems of power. Object, they are culture uh, refers to objects and practices which gain significance through the criss crossing of discourses. In this way, language is a site of culture. Next, what does it mean that we are uh, we are caught, sorry, this should be in. What does it mean that we are caught in a language trap? What is the way out according to Barker? Now, we have seen that uh, language uh, it, uh, you know language delimits okay language or sort of sets the limits through which we may articulate things and yet it is not you know it is not a fact that we are always in language trap okay it is through uh, uh, imagining alternative possibilities to redescription resignification understanding that the signify is not a neutral innocent thing it is full of power issues of power and politics and understanding acknowledging the fact that there will always be social contradictions. So, we try to minimize this uh, you know at least our outlook should be such these are ways in which it is possible for us to escape the language trap. Then discuss briefly final question discuss briefly the formulations of Rorty regarding language and anti representationalism you would say that Rorty considers culture as a conversation as not and not something that can be faithfully represented, where there is always a primacy of language and we can refer to what we had discussed uh, you know we had, we had unpacked all these points these six points which are given by Barker and the summation of Rorty's contribution. Okay, the importance even though language is important that it were that it is that culture happens in a social context of social relationships of social dialogue. Okay and uh, social practice of reason giving and yet importance of language skills and also understanding that there is a variability every every state of affair can have a variability of accounts and it is important to look at different perspectives. And finally, very importantly that culture involves both agreement and contestation. Okay. It is it would it, it would certainly not be wise for us to think that one day we will have a system that is full of harmony and where there is no conflict. The moment we acknowledge the fact that there is conflict in our social lives and there will always be perhaps conflict, then there we will also begin to think of ways to minimize the conflict okay? and perhaps to be always in agreement is not a good thing at least at all times. Right? So, um, um, I hope uh, you know again one can spend so much time one can could spend uh, 10 lectures on talking you know talking about language and its importance uh, in cultural studies in many of my lectures till now i think uh, yeah um, you know adequate reference has been made uh, to uh, to language the centrality of language certainly you know in in the first few lectures and uh, one or two lectures in the second module it is important to understand and accept the fact that language as i said being both constitutive of culture and also as a site of culture, because that is where the description of culture happens. Okay? And even though culture is material, objects and practices are material, things are tangible. Okay? When we articulate it, we articulate it through a system of signification, which as we know is not uh, you know, an, an innocuous matter, which is, not, which is not something that is bereft of politics and power. So, thank you so much and uh, we shall be moving on in the next lecture to an another important site increasingly important for us full of contestations which is um, and the next uh, you know which is globalization right. So, we will be looking at globalization from a cultural studies perspective. Thank you so much.